The Doohan name is synonymous with motorsport royalty and Jack Doohan is the latest heir to that legacy. Coming from a family with a rich racing history, it wouldn't be wrong to say that racing is in his blood. Jack was born in 2003 and grew up on the Gold Coast, Australia. His father, Mick Doohan, is a five-time consecutive MotoGP world champion and is regarded as one of the most talented riders in motorcycle racing history. Unlike his father, however, Jack showed more interest in racing cars, though he remains a big fan of motorcycle racing and closely follows the MotoGP races. Jack is set to race for Alpine in 2025, but is he truly prepared for the extremely challenging endeavor that is Formula One? Well, let's find out in this video. Jack started karting competitively at the age of eight. Michael Schumacher, the seven-time F1 world champion, gifted Jack his first kart. Jack quickly made a name for himself with a successful karting record, winning the Australian Karting Championship two years in a row in 2015 and 2016. He then competed in the CIK FIA Karting European Championship, where he finished third. Impressed by his karting performances, Jack was signed to the Red Bull Junior Team in 2017. Jack made the leap into single-seater racing in 2019, competing in the F4 British Championship with the Arden Racing Team. He was partnered with fellow Red Bull Junior Dennis Hulger. Jack finished the season fifth in the standings with three wins and 12 podiums. However, he was narrowly beaten by his teammate who finished fourth, just one point ahead of Jack. In 2019, Jack moved to the Euro Formula Open Championship with the British Double R team, partnering with Swedish driver Linus Lundqvist. Unfortunately, it was an underwhelming season for Jack as he finished 11th in the standings with just two podium finishes. Marino Sardo dominated the championship, leaving the competition far behind. Jack was also outperformed by his teammate, who finished fifth. That same year, Jack also competed in the Asian F3 Championship with the High Tech team. He had a much stronger campaign there, finishing second in the standings with five wins and a total of 13 podiums. He ended the season 25 points behind the experienced championship winner, Ukyo Sasahara. Jack returned to the Asian F3 series in the winter of 2019 for a second attempt and once again finished as the runner-up, securing five wins. This time, he was bested by Dutch driver Joey Alders. In 2020, Jack competed in the FIA Formula 3 Championship with HWA Race Lab, partnering with Ferrari Academy junior Enzo Fittipaldi and Jake Hughes. This season proved to be the toughest of Jack's racing career, as he failed to score a single point and finished 26th in the standings behind both of his teammates. Despite coming close to scoring points in a few races, he was unable to convert those opportunities and was plagued by incidents and bad luck. However, bad luck can only be blamed so much and the season was undeniably uncharacteristic for Jack. It was the first time in Jack's career that he completed a season without scoring any points. His teammate Jake Hughes finished seventh with over 100 points, while Fittipaldi placed 15th with 27 points. Jack described it as the hardest year of his career, but acknowledged that he learned a lot from the experience. Jack remained in Formula 3 for 2021, but switched teams to Trident, where he partnered with Clement Novelak and David Schumacher. The season featured a strong lineup of drivers, including Frederick Vesti, Victor Martins, Logan Sargent, and Dennis Hauger. That year marked a significant improvement for Jack. He finished second in the standings, 26 points behind the championship winner and his former teammate, Dennis Hauger. Jack ended the season with four wins and three additional podiums, outperforming both of his teammates. At the end of 2021, Jack left the Red Bull Junior program and joined the Alpine Academy for 2022 and beyond. He believed that Alpine offered him better opportunities for career progression with more options. In 2022, Jack graduated to Formula 2 with the Virtuosi Racing Team partnering with Marino Sato. He made an immediate impact by securing pole position in the first race in Bahrain. The 2022 F2 grid featured a strong lineup of drivers, including Theo Porcher, Liam Lawson, Logan Sargent, Dennis Hauger, Yuri Vips, Frederick Vesti, and Richard Verschur. Jack secured his first F2 win at Silverstone, followed by two more victories in Hungary and Spa. He also endured six retirements during the season, which cost him valuable points in the championship fight. Jack ultimately finished the season in sixth place with three wins, three poles, and a total of six podiums, comfortably outperforming his teammate, who finished 22nd. In 2023, Jack was announced as the reserve driver for Alpine. He remained in Formula 2 for another season with the Virtuosi team, this time partnering with Amory Cordiel. Jack had the potential to win the championship and was clearly competitive, but silly mistakes, being in the wrong place at the wrong time, and some unfortunate contacts caused the title to slip away. He finished the season in a respectable third place, behind Theo Porcher and Frederick Vesti, and was 35 points behind the championship winner, 
While a 35 point difference may seem significant, it was easily within reach throughout the season. It was one of those seasons where some drivers struggled to put together a clean weekend despite being the fastest overall. Vesti and Jack were the favourites most of the season but both lost the championship to Porsche. In motorsport, sometimes things don't work out the way they should for some people. Rather than staying in F2 for another year, Jack decided to focus on his role as a reserve and development driver at Alpine. Now that Jack has been announced as the driver for Alpine in 2025, some questions arise every time a new driver joins the F1 grid. And the first question is, how good is Jack actually? It's hard to predict how Jack will perform in Formula 1, but if you look at the stats from his junior categories, his performance has been somewhat variable. I'm not saying he's been bad. He's come close to winning championships multiple times, but didn't manage to secure them, sometimes due to factors beyond his control. Let's put it this way. There are drivers like Charles Leclerc, George Russell, Lando Norris, and Oscar Piastri, whose junior records stand out. Then there are drivers like Yuki Tsunoda, Joe Guan Yu and Logan Sargent, who also have respectable junior records but aren't as impressive. I think Jack falls into the latter group. However, in F1, it's difficult to determine how they'll perform. Like in Logan's case, it didn't work out, but for Sonoda, it's going great. It ultimately comes down to adaptability. How quickly can they get up to speed in F1 and maintain that pace consistently? However, I believe he has the potential to achieve greatness in this sport. I think Jack has more to offer than we've seen from him so far. Um, I feel like Jack is one of those drivers whose record doesn't do justice to his talent and capabilities. Hopefully he'll be able to change that in Formula 1. The next question is, how does Jack compare to other upcoming rookies like Kimi Antonelli, Oliver Behrman and Liam Lawson? Well, firstly it's impossible to compare anyone to Antonelli right now, as he's much younger than the others and hasn't had a full F2 season yet. His F2 season so far has been a bit rocky, which makes it tough to predict how Antonelli's debut F1 season will go. Before F2, Kimi's junior record was astonishing, and he's predicted to be the next big thing in Formula 1. Plus, he's going to be in a Mercedes, so I don't think it would be very fair to compare him to Jack. Compared to the other two, I expect Jack to perform on par with Behrman and Lawson. If you look at their junior career records, they are quite similar, so I feel like they're all on the same level. However, as I mentioned before, there's no guarantee that a driver with a strong junior record will succeed in F1. I was surprised to see Logan struggling so much with Williams as I had high expectations for him. So it wouldn't be surprising if one or more of these rookies struggle next year while others excel. These three drivers may not have as extraordinary records as some others, but they have the potential to reach a high level in the future. If Lawson also gets an F1 seat next season, these three will have plenty of battles on track as they'll be driving somewhat similar machinery. It'll be interesting to see which rookie performs the best in 2025. If I were to predict their performances next season, I would say Liam would have the upper hand over Ollie and Jack as he raced in five F1 races last season and has slightly more experience. Then I would place Jack ahead of Oli. Oli is struggling in F2 this season, and I'm not sure why. Whether it's due to the new cars or having Antonelli as a teammate is hard to say. Yes, I know he drove brilliantly in Jeddah when he filled in for Carlos Sainz at Ferrari, but the thing is, he was driving a Ferrari then. Next year, he'll be in a Haas. Haas is not an easy team to drive for, nor do they have an easy car, so I feel like he'll have to work really hard next season. Again, this is just my opinion and I could be completely wrong. Maybe Ollie will outperform the other rookies, who knows. And the final question is, how would Jack fare against Gasly at Alpine next season? Well, Gasly is a very talented driver and I rate him highly. When he's comfortable in the car, he's fast and consistent. However, the Alpine team is not in the best situation right now. Their car performance is inconsistent and the management is in disarray. Uh, there's a lot of reshuffling and brand rebuilding going on, so I don't think Jack will have an easy season next year. Gasly is about to complete two years with the team and seems to have a much better understanding of the car and the team environment now, which will be advantageous for him. Jack will need to be competitive from the start to prove his worth to the team, as there will be many other candidates waiting in line as well. I don't expect Jack to immediately start beating Gasly, who will likely be the lead Alpine driver in the standings. Though, I expect Jack to be close to him by the end of the season and even out-qualify him a couple of times. If I were to compare it to someone, I'd say it will be similar to Sonoda's rookie season, maybe even a bit better, as Jack seems to be a calmer and more mature driver from what I've seen. In the end, I'd say Jack is a solid choice for Alpine. They missed out on Piastri in 2022, and it seems they're finally ready to take a chance on their young drivers. Maybe this is what they've been missing all these years, and they can finally head in the right direction with the help of a young and energetic lineup. And that's it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed it, give it a like and please subscribe as well. Let me know your thoughts about Jack in the comments down below and I'll see you guys in the next video.